Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Weekly Update. I am your host, Mark Cates. Now, yes, uh, I have not done an episode in a couple of weeks, and I've told everybody, uh, all the promoters and all the wrestlers and all the fans that have been emailing me that uh, as soon as I got a, some spare time, that I would come back and do another weekly update. Uh, most have been asking for me to do the one-on-one -on -one thing and shooting the opinions. So, um... I've been, I got my laptop out because I've been um, storing all the emails and the comments and the questions and the topics and everything. And uh, in here in just a second, I'm going to start going through a few uh, this week and next week. Um, I'm going to try to answer all the questions, concerns, topics, uh, comments, whatever you want to call everything that everybody's been emailing me. Um, first, uh, the reason why I haven't done an update in a few weeks is because uh, I've been planning for the biggest event in SCWA history and that was uh, Caged 2010. Eight steel cage matches in one night which actually turned into nine steel cage matches in one night. Um, we added a five-man double ladder match in the cage. Um, awesome event. We had 442 fans show up. Uh, we actually had to turn away people at the door due to run out of seats um, and parking was an issue and everything so it was a big success I want to thank all the fans that showed up I want to thank all the wrestlers all the hard work that you put into this um, everybody without mentioning any names that helped me out you know thank you from the bottom of my heart we pulled it off um, so I'm not gonna sit here and just talk and talk about cage so I'm gonna move on to some emails so let's see what we got here first um, I have, you know, been reading through these, and um, we're going we're gonna to start with competition. Um, got an email that says, uh, let's see, not going to mention any names, no use in doing all that. Um, competition in the Indies. There are hundreds of promotions all over the United States especially in North Carolina, especially since North Carolina is really where wrestling, you know, mid-Atlantic, where wrestling started. Not just North Carolina, but, you know, good area. Greensboro really set it off. What do you think about the competition level with what you're trying to do with bringing in former TNA superstars and now working on bringing in former WWE superstars? Do you think the fans will continue to come back show after show, or do you think that this will drown out your indie wrestling. Well, competition. Okay, first of all, it's a business for me. So, all the other competitors out there, you know, not trying to be rude, nothing mean, but, you know, some do it for the fun of it. Some do it for the love of it. Some do it for business. Me, I do it for all. I do it, one, for business, one, because I love wrestling. And, you know, and I love competition. But you got to understand something. You have to sometimes bring in the names to pull people. To be able to show people what your guys and your girls can do. You know, if you've got awesome lady wrestlers and awesome guy wrestlers, the only way that a mass of people is going to see it is to bring in a name that they all know, that they all want to come and see. You know, and Cage was a perfect example. We had former TNA knockout ODB, former TNA superstar, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, and former WWE diva and multi-women's, uh, WWE women's champion, Mickey James. Now, I had hundreds of people come up to me and say, you know, the steel cage matches, you know, that drawed me here. ODB, Daniels, Mickey drawed me here. But now I see that you have guys and you have ladies here that can hang with the professionals. I think the best compliment out of the whole night, and this goes right to the competition, was that our SCWA heavyweight champion, Adam Page, the comment was made that he could hang with a true professional like Christopher Daniels. Well, without bringing that name to make and create competition with other companies, we couldn't show what our superstars could do. So if you want to compete, you compete. 
If you want to just continue to put on shows and enjoy it, then continue to put on shows and enjoy it. I want to compete. Just like I've told people on the internet, SCWA will continue to build itself into the biggest independent professional wrestling company until we get to the top. I will not stop. So that's my thought on competition right now, you know. Um, let's move on to another email. I'm not going to really read this email, but I do want to mention on it for a second. You know, basically it was titled, Making a Living in the Independent Wrestling Network. Is it possible or is it a lie? Okay, there's, there's people out here that say that you can't make a living in the independent wrestling. Well, let me tell you something. If you are not making a living in independent wrestling, then something's not being done right. There is ways of making a living at independent wrestling. Now, I agree that wrestlers cannot make a living in independent wrestling. They get their start in independent wrestling and they work their way up to the big dogs to make their living. Now, I also agree that not all independent promotions can make a living, but there are plenty of ways to make a living in independent wrestling. There's marketing, selling products, marketing your wrestlers, marketing your company, selling yourself. That's how you make a living. Bringing in competition, wrestlers to put on competition, and bringing in more ticket sales. So basically what it all comes down to is, is you make a good relationship with a venue. You know, if it's an armory, a school, whatever, you get a good venue. You make a good relationship with them. You help them, they help you. Okay, then you balance out what guys in the locker room who have paid their dues and who deserve to be paid money. Not all of them do. You gotta pay your dues. You can't pay everybody, but you want to. Some of you do, I do. Okay, then you bring in enough names to draw in people. So if you're charging 10, 12, 15 dollars a ticket to where by the time the night is over, you're clearing 700, 1,000, 1,500. It all depends on what the show's gonna do. But if you're doing gimmick sales, you know, merchandising sales, you can create a good living. So just to answer the main question, because I know this was plugged at me, 90% of my income is from wrestling. Now, no, 90% of that income is not from the actual shows. But 90% of my personal income comes from the makeup of the shows and from my gimmick sales and my retail sales. So all of that combined, yeah, 90% of my living is from wrestling. Now, yes, I am a freelance graphics designer. I used to make more money at that, but I have decided to put more of my time into wrestling to make it a full-time business. Right now, no, not all of my income is being provided by the wrestling, but I guarantee you within a year with the way I'm going, it will. If you want it bad enough and you're willing to put the time and effort into it, you can make a living in independent wrestling. My goal when I started almost two years ago was to take myself and 11 other people and us make a living out of it. 10 of those other 11 are my wrestlers. Then we bring in new talent and we keep growing. So I'm going to shut up on that. Okay, this was my best email of it all. Women wrestling, is it a mistake or is it a plus? Some say that you are just bringing in lady wrestlers to sell TNA and to try to get action on the side. Is this the truth or are you really trying to promote real women wrestling? Okay, my question to Sarah in Burlington, North Carolina, I will say your name because it was a lady that asked the question. Um, I'd say this. Go to www.scwamindshoptv.com. You can join it for free right this minute. Has all our full shows right there. You watch our ladies wrestling and you will see 
women's professional wrestling. You will not see selling TNA, not trying to get action on the side. You will see true women wrestling. I've heard the comment so many times in the last month that the new NXT division of the Divas that are women show them really how to wrestle. I think one comment was that in less than one minute our girls did more moves in one minute than them girls could do in 30 minutes. Now there are tons of true professional women's wrestlers out there. Not all these promoters bring them in just for TNA. I know I don't. You know this is a family oriented business and no I agree it can't stay completely family oriented because there is fighting and there is violence and all that but you know what you can make it as close to family oriented as possible no it can't be PG like the WWE because that's bull but PG 13 that's pretty much what we are so watch our wrestling our women's wrestling and you will see true professional women's wrestling. Not no trying to get a piece on the side, not trying to sell TNA. That's not what we're doing. That's why my wife, Victoria, made a rule for our women's wrestlers. You have to cover up. You can't show but so much because we're not trying to sell the sex. We're trying to sell wrestling. So there's a big, big, big difference. Anybody else that says any different about me and SCWA and what we're doing, you might want to check who's saying it. Okay. I think, um, I, think I might have time for one more email. Let's just go through. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, Matt Hardy going to TNA. What are your thoughts about Matt Hardy jumping from WWE to TNA? Honestly, I think it would be a smart move. Um, yes, I agree it's less money in TNA than in WWE, but I feel like that the TNA, it, it's... It, the politics is not good for wrestling no matter what. But for Matt Hardy, I feel like that if he did go to TNA, it would not be a wrong move. It would not be a stupid move. Him and, uh, you know, Matt and Jeff could get back together and they could be the Hardy Boys again. You know, and that would give Generation Me and the Motor City Machine Guns and Beer Money and all the other guys in TNA another good tag team, you know, to compete with. And I don't think it would be a stupid move. There's probably a lot of the politics that he deals with with the WWE right now that he would not have to deal with with TNA. Now, yes, TNA politics are getting stiffer, in my opinion, as time goes on. And that's just what happens when you get bigger. You know, you have to set more rules. But I feel like Jeff will feel, I mean, Matt will feel more comfortable in TNA. And if he does make the move, I support him. I know a lot of other people that will support him. And I will continue to watch Impact. Now, if he got, stay, sticks with the WWE, then so be it. That's his own decision. So I guess we'll just all have to wait and see what happens um, and go from there. So, got time for one more fast email. Trying to find one I could do real quick here. Ah, here's one. Subject backstabbers. <laughs> what are your thoughts on back on the huge number of backstabbers in the independent network? Every time I turn around, every time I try to do something right, someone is stabbing me in the back. I have been in this business for 14 years. It looks like that you handle yourself and your situations very easily, but it may just be the way you handle things. What do you think about backstabbers? Have you dealt with backstabbers, etc.? Backstabbers, they're left and right. Let me put it to you like this. You, you, no matter what business you're in, there are backstabbers. But I'm going to tell you something I've learned in this business. There is a heck of a lot of backstabbers in this business. I mean... <sighs> There are a dime a dozen in this business. You know, you come in and me, I'm a businessman. And then you got the wrestler over here slash promoter. And you come in and you try to offer them a good, you know, a good idea is this, that, and the other. If it's not their idea, most of the time they don't want to take it. They don't want to listen to you. So then the next thing you know, you build things up. You try to help them. And the next thing you know, they call you a backstabber. When really all they're doing is stabbing you in the back. But you know what? Backstabbers are a dime a dozen. And the only thing I can say is, is good luck. Um, I've been stabbed in the back. I probably will be stabbed in the back a lot more. Um, but 
I've run out of time. Same place. Pro Wrestling Weekly Update right here next week. A lot more comments, a lot more answers. Thank you.